Hello game developers and welcome to a new XR tutorial. In this one we are going to be having a look at Snap Zones. Let's dive right in. So if you love game development you should definitely check out my channel. I've got tons of videos on there that will teach you the basics of getting started in game development. Take care and enjoy the video. So with having a keen interest in VR and VR development You've probably played a couple of games where you've seen a 3D object or a model that you have to pick up and put in a certain place. These places are called snap zones and today I'm going to teach you how to make them in Unity. So before we delve in into the world of snap interactions, I just want to show you kind of what we're going to be working up towards and, and to show you if you're not quite sure what I'm, I mean by snap interactions, uh, hopefully this little demo will show you what I mean. So gonna um, get old faithful here my oculus rift it's aging gracefully uh, and we're gonna quickly dive into VR and take a look at this scene actually it's hit maximize on play so we can see it big awesome right okay so you can see here I've got my hands uh, and it's the same scene as we left it in our um, last tutorial with the teleport all working um, you don't actually need that all this functionality to be able to follow along with this video and um, this is all kind of um, separate from what we've done in the past so here we have some objects uh, and we have our sword here awesome uh, we have a cube also uh, from our last tutorial this thing here is our snap interactor uh, and in this particular case uh, I've actually set it up so it only takes one model but by default, you could put any object in here and it would snap into place. But this one in particular just takes our sword. So um, we can take this out and move it around and, and do what we want. Back our box. Yeah, die box. And then we can snap it back into our little snap interactor. Um, so you see these in games often. Um, sometimes they're useful for like infantry, infantry, inventory. Uh, and sometimes they can be used for puzzles. So let's say we had to find a certain object that goes in this interactor. By placing it, it would trigger our, trigger the next part of the game logic. So let's now have a look at our scene and create a very simple snap interactor. Alrighty then, let's have a look and create a socket interactor. And you'll be pleased to know, initially they are actually very easy to set up. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to create a sphere. And it's going to be initially quite big. Let's, uh, let's just scale that down a little bit and we'll put it over this side of the table. Uh, and this is just a standard game object at the moment and it, it contains a sphere mesh filter, mesh renderer and a sphere collider and a material. Now to turn this into a socket interactor, all we need to do is go to add component and type in socket and you're going to get the XR socket interactor component pop up. We're going to go ahead and add this. Now for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the mesh renderer. Uh, and under hover mesh material, I've created, I'm going to create a green snap material, which I have here, which is just a green material with a bit of transparency. Really, really easy. Uh, and under the XR socket interactor, I'm going to drag this green snap into my hover mesh material. Uh, and do the same for a current hover mesh material, which I've just got as red. Uh, and I've also got show interactable hover meshes checked. So when we hover our mesh that we're holding into this collider here it's, it's going to um, show up as a transparent object also make sure the socket is active which I think by default it probably should be anyway uh, and one very important thing to note about this is that we need to change our sphere collider and we need to make sure is trigger is checked so go ahead and tick that box and I'm going to go ahead and move this over slightly just to make sure it's a bit easier to actually um, get a game component in there so that in fact, is all we really need to get going with a socket interactor. This socket interactor is set to accept any game object. Um, let's go ahead and test this out quickly and I'll show you what I mean. Now here we are back in VR. I'm going to pick up my sword and then you see as I go into my sphere collider, yeah, it's going to highlight the mesh with the green material that we place in there and then I can let go and it's going to snap into position. Slightly weird position. And then we can do the same with our cube. If we go and try and put our cube in this snap interactor, you can see that um, the snap interactor script knows that it's got an object in there already and it's showing our red materials indicated to us that we can't snap this object 
until we take this one out and then that one will pop in. You can see it snaps in because I'm within the collider there. So that's that socket interactor and that's working great. Um, but what about if you want to see where the socket interactor is before we try and put something in it so we're not endlessly waving our arms around trying to find where to put things. Well, let's make another one just for some practice. Let's go and create a sphere. So go 3D object sphere. And let's move that up to over here, roughly. And we we'll keep the scale at one, 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 one. Keep the scale at one for everything. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove, turn off the mesh renderer, and just resize the scale of the sphere collider. Uh, just like so, we're clicking on that little box edit collider. Uh, and then make it the size we want it to be. And we'll go ahead and reposition that a little bit just up like so. Then we'll go ahead and rename this to socket interactor with mesh. And then inside here, we'll go ahead and we'll create any 3D object. Um, for now, let's go ahead and just put a, another sphere inside and make that smaller. And we don't need the sphere collider, so we'll remove that component. So now we have our socket interactor as a parent with a 3D object inside that's going to represent a place in 3D where we can click things and highlight it to the user. The reason I've done it like that is because quite often in development, uh, it's nice to keep your art separate from your functionality as much as you can do. All I need to do to replace the 3D or the object that's acting as a visual for the user, all we need to do is replace one little child and it doesn't contain any of the functionality that we would need to hook up again. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the blue snap material onto that for the time being. And on our socket interactor with mesh, we'll go ahead and we'll add in our XR socket interactor and we'll give it our green snap of a mesh material. So we, we will now need to control the visibility of our sphere here because we don't want it on once uh, the user enters the collider, we need to turn it off. So we can leverage the interactor events to control how our socket interactor is working. And uh, we're gonna need to use all four of these events and we're gonna need uh, one item in each just to control the visibility of this sphere or the artwork for the object that highlights the interaction to the user. And then we're gonna go ahead and we'll drag in our sphere for each one. In fact, we'll give that sphere a bit a better name. Let's call this one user visual. And so when we enter the hover, we want to deactivate our user visual game object. And then when we exit, we want to turn it back on. And then when we drop our cube into the box, we're going to go ahead and turn the mesh renderer off. And then when we try and remove it from the box, we're going to turn the mesh renderer back on. Like so. Let's jump into VR and see how that's working out. See if I've actually wired all that up right. So we're going to get our cube. Oh, great, it's all the way up there. And place it inside. And let's have a look. That hasn't triggered. I like a good bit of debugging. So, what's going on? Let's have a look at our cube first of all. That's all okay. We know that one works because it works with the other socket interactor. And we know it's something to do with the socket interactor. And it will be because. Like a moron, I didn't check the is trigger on the sphere collider. I wonder if any of you out there in the world noticed that when I put it on there. Let's have another go at that. I'm going to move back a bit, give myself some space. And then now when I go towards that um, visual highlight, it's going to change to the object I can drop in there. Uh, and then I can let go and it stays and I can come away. And then when I go and reach up and grab it and take it away, it's going to put that highlight back on for us. Uh, I wonder if you could throw this in there, that'd be quite cool. Oh yeah, run like a girl again. So that's how I would go about controlling the, the visibility and giving a bit of um, prompting to the user that there's something that can be interacted with there. You don't need to have that, it's just something that you can add on. So now let's have a look at how we can create or use a socket interactor to only take one type of object. So we kind of have that functionality in the scene already with our socket interactor for our sword here. And all it's really doing is leveraging the interaction layer masks that I, we touched upon in my previous tutorial. But we'll go ahead from scratch uh, and make another one. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to drop in the sword to the scene. So if you have a very specific shape or a thing that you want to fit into like a certain place, 
you could use a model uh, and you could drop in let's say the sword like so we'll rotate it around turn this off one off for a second so currently this is just a normal model that we've dropped in our scene and we'll go and give it our material to show that it's actually socket interactor so let's go for our blue snap so we've got our sword in our scene now we need to create a game object that goes around that so we'll go ahead to create 3d we'll go to create empty and it's going to put in um, an empty game object into our scene we'll copy that into our sword we'll go to reset position or just reset uh, and then remove it and what that's done is it's put it at the sword position and we'll call this sword interactor and we'll go ahead and drop that the sword into that newly created empty game object so we have our artwork this is just our visual for the user and we have our what will be our socket interactor so let's go through it again we'll go ahead and add a box collider and let's fit this to the shape of our sword or actually no it doesn't need to be to the shape of our sword it's just the area where the um the snap interaction can occur so and um, it doesn't have to be perfect like that's looking pretty good a bit long and there we go that fits our socket collider around our sword and then let's remember this time to check is trigger and we'll go ahead and add to component we're going to add the xr socket interactor and then we need to turn off this sword object when um, our, a valid object comes inside this box so again we need four of these in the events and we'll drag in our sword object to each one Remember, this is just the visual signifying to the user that they can drop in an object here. So we're going to turn the game object off. When hover is entered, turn it back on. When the hover is exited and then when they drop it in, we're going to turn off the mesh renderer. In fact, that'll probably work the other way around as well. Just turn off the mesh renderer of the hover and then turn off the game object when um, we've dropped the object. That probably makes more sense, but we'll stick with this for now. And just say ball enabled and we're going to leave that as false when we've dropped it in and we'll turn on the mesh renderer when we take it out so this socket interactor at the moment will take any input let me show you let's make sure it's all working correctly before we go to the next stage anyway so there's my socket interactor and you can see there that's it's going to take input from my cube oh god and it's also going to take input from my sword and then put it at a funny angle because we haven't got the attached transform in there at the moment so let's come back out of that, sort my wig out, and then the next step for us is now going to be to tell this socket interactor to only accept objects on a certain layer. So what we need to do is look at our layers. So I'm just going to click on our sword for a minute, and you can pretty much click on any game object too. All we're doing is creating a layer. We're going to go to our layer, and we're going to go to add layer. And you see here I already entered one for our sword because I was testing it out because um, it always goes wrong when I just wing it and then we're just going to create a new layer and I'm going to be original and put new sword okay this hasn't all we've done here is created a new layer no no layers are assigned at the moment and on our sword interactor we have the interaction layer mask we can change this to nothing and then change new sword layer so it's only going to accept interactions from objects that are on this layer if you click on the sword in the hierarchy and look at its interaction layer mask you can see that we have everything checked um, as you normally would do but we also have our sword checked it's telling it it's telling it that it can interact with things on the sword layer but we also want to check the new sword layer so we go ahead and put it on that one and you see it's ticked it in the box so now we put it on the new sword layer and go back into VR you can see that my cube won't go into my snap object because it's rubbish I'll put it up there but my sword I can put into my thingy it's, I need to set the attach transform but you can see it's being accepted that's all working great so the caveats with that are that it's going to take a little bit of planning in your scene because this socket interactor is not looking for a specific object it's looking for a specific layer so if you had more than one sword both of these swords will now go into this socket 
interactor and if we change this cube to put it on the, the new sword layer uh, that would also go in there so it'll take a little bit of planning with the layers and a little bit of game design as well because what you want to think about is having layers um for your puzzle items so maybe you want to set a maximum amount of items in your level for how many puzzles you have let's say we had like um four areas for each level where we could have socket interactions or you had to find an object in your scene and, and put it in a certain place then you, you need four individual layers to cater for those four individual components and allowing only one object in your level to be able to go into that snap feature so now let's make our sword orientate around the right way we're going to create an empty game object in our um sword interactor socket thing i can't remember what it was called and then we're going to create empty and we'll call this um, the sword transform point and we'll go back to our sword interactor and drag that sword transform point into our attach transform socket then I will don the VR headset and we will go into VR quickly and what we need to do is put our sword into our um, socket interactor then wear my VR headset like a hat and go to scene view and now we need to manip manipulate our transform point so our sword is oriented, oriented, orientated the right way. At least according to how we want it to look. So that's kind of there, I think. And then with the sword transform point highlighted, copy that component, come out of play mode, and then paste the values back in by going to paste component values. And it's going to... Um, you see the pivot move there and if you put it on local space you can see how we've orientated it so now um, calculations are correct we should be able to drop our sword in and it'll go the right way as beforehand it was jumpy angle and let's quickly fix our green sword the hover sword you can see there we've got all kind of weirdness going on and when we hover over it um, we can actually use our own hover over for that or just use the existing sword that we have in, in our events. So let's quickly fix that one. So we don't want to show in our XR socket interactor on our sword, we don't want to show the interactable other meshes. Let's turn that off. Uh, and instead, because our sword's in the right place, all we really need to is change its color. So for that, we'll go and click on the mesh renderer and we'll go to material material. And we can say that and um, once we hover into it, it's going to go green because it currently is blue. And then when we exit, we want it to go back to our blue material. So we can say mesh renderer, material material, blue snap. Let's give that a whirl. Jesus. You can see now when I bring our sword into the hover area, um, our highlight's going to go green. The can we let go. Our, our sword highlight's going to go away because our sword is snapped into its correct position. And then we can take it away and our snap thing comes back. That's done. So hopefully that's shown you how we can use the socket interactors and just shown you, giving you a good idea just on how easy they are to configure and, and do all the custom stuff that you need them to do. Um, like for instance, all the stuff we did with creating this socket interactor and giving it like a custom mesh so we know only one object can go in there. Get my sword out. Oh no. So the so socket interactor, as you can see, is really versatile. Uh, and we can pretty much create any functionality we want with those. Now I will become the chosen one. Ta -da! Oh no, I'm supposed to take it out, aren't I? Ka -ching! There can be only one. That's the wrong film. Thailander. Ooh, wow, there we have it. That was quite a lot to take in and hopefully I didn't go too quickly. But if I did, apologies. But hopefully after watching this video, you've got a real good idea now of how the XR socket interactors work and how you can use them to create custom functionality in your game um, and hopefully replicate some of those cool puzzles or um, interactions that you've seen in some of your favorite games. As always, the project files for this are going to be on my Patreon page. I have included a link in the description to the sword object that I used for this tutorial. And if you've learned something and you like the video, then please consider giving us a like. Uh, it really helped me out with my channel. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.